In this short video, we will be unpacking the basic concept of standard deviation in statistics. We'll start with the basics what is standard deviation and how to calculate standard deviation. We'll look at this using a real life example here. We'll understand what is the difference between standard deviation for population and standard deviation for sample. So please stay tuned, don't go anywhere else, just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Mean from each individual value which comes to be like in this case 6.7 for the first friend. Standard deviation is a measure of how spread the data is with respect to mean. In short, it is a deviation from mean or the center value. Let's understand using this graph. Like for any set of data, you can easily calculate the mean and the standard deviation. For in this case, we are calculating the multiple standard deviation, 0.5 standard deviation, 1 standard deviation, 1.5 and 2 standard deviation. So if the standard deviation is small, it means that most of the values are close to the mean. And if it is large, it means that the values are more spread out. Like in this case, B has the highest standard deviation, while the A has the lower standard deviation. So this is often denoted by term sigma. We call it standard deviation or sigma, which measures the amount of variation or the dispersion in the set of values. Whether you are in finance, science, medical or any field or just curious about the world around you, standard deviation is your go-to tool here. So before we move ahead, let us first understand these two terms, population and sample. Sample is a small set of members selected from a population to represent the population. It is basically a subset of a population. Population, on another hand, uh, is basically a group from which the sample is drawn. Exact population parameters will depend upon the scope of the study. Now, let us understand the difference between sample and population using some real life examples. So, sometime back, millions of people were actually infected because of the COVID 19, and many companies were doing some clinical trials and uh, other studies to make the vaccine. So, they will select small portion of people from different backgrounds probably age, gender, who were actually infected because of this COVID-19 as a sample and then will perform the study on these samples. So these samples would represent the millions of people who were actually infected worldwide because it is not possible to conduct tests on millions of individuals at one point of time. So that is the basic difference between sample and population. Now coming back to standard deviation, what is the difference between the formula for sample and population? Let's see the first for the sample. So for sample, it is given by summation under root uh, x minus x bar kaho square divided by n minus 1. Where x is the individual value in the data, x bar is the some sample mean of all the values and n denotes the number of samples. Now let's look at the formula for the population. It is underscore under root uh, summation x minus x bar kaho square divided by n. Where again x denotes the individual values in the data x bar denotes the population mean and n denotes the total population. So you will see the difference like uh, in sample we have in the denominator n minus 1. In population we have n. <clears throat> why so? Like while dealing with the sample we always use n minus 1. The use of n minus 1 instead of n is basically a correction for the bias that arises when using the sample standard deviation formula. The idea is that if you have n observations, you only have n minus one independent piece of information after estimating the sample mean. The last observation value is not independent of sample mean because the mean itself in is based on all the n observations. So by dividing by n minus one rather than n, you are essentially giving each data point in the sample more freedom in the calculation and this correction basically helps to provide more accurate estimate of the population standard deviation when working with a sample. Now let's see how this standard deviation is used in the normal distribution empirical rule or the 68-95-99 rule. It states that almost all the observed data fall within the three standard deviation which is noted by mean mu and sigma as average. So it says that 68.2% of the population will fall within the one standard deviation, plus minus one standard deviation. 95.4% of the population will fall within the plus minus two standard deviation. 
and 99.7% of the population will fall within the three standard deviation. That is the empirical rule or the three sigma rule. Let's uh, see this with the help of a real example. Imagine that you have a group of friends and you want to know how tall they are. You could actually calculate the average height, but that won't tell you the whole story, right? Some friends might be taller than the average, while others might be shorter. Standard deviation will help you understand this variation between your friends. Let's see. Imagine that you have a scale. You measure the height of each person, each of your friend, and you record it in this form. And then you calculate the mean of all these six friends, which comes to 106.33. Now, with the help of this mean and individual values, you calculate the difference of mean from each individual value, which comes to be like in this case, 6.7 for the first friend. For the second one, it would be around 40.2. For third one, it would be around 25.7. For fourth one, it would be around minus 35.8 because it is less than the average. And for fourth, fifth one, it is like 114.7. For seventh one, it is close to minus 51.3, like the negative one. This is how you calculate the difference between the from the mean of each individual values. Now let's apply the formula, assuming that it is for population. So we'll put all the values that we have calculated in the formula below and it comes to 1654452 plus 49 divided by 6, which comes to 908.75. It will be taken the root. The standard deviation for this data is coming as around as 30.14. That is how you calculate the standard deviation for population here. Let us look at some questions from the standard deviation. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Please share this video with all your friends and colleagues. And if you have any suggestions or comments, do let me know in the comment box below. Read the questions and leave your answers in the comment section below. Question number one. What does a higher standard deviation indicates about a set of data in the statistics? Should be easy one for you. Data points are closer to mean. Data points are farther away from mean mean is spread there is no relation i have covered this topic clearly in this video so if you still don't know please check out this video again if all the data points are in a set are identical what is the standard deviation zero one undefined or infinity last question if the data set has standard deviation of zero what can be said about the data point they all are negative, they all are positive, they all are same, none of the above. You can leave your answers in the comment section below. Thank you.